All right, it is NBA opening night, and we get a rematch of the Western Conference Finals. Lakers, Nuggets, which means we get to see this guy, LeBron James, in action. The King, at 38 years old, is the oldest active player in the NBA, but he is embarking on his 21st season. Since joining the Lake Show, LeBron has played only one so-called, quote, full season, and that was in the bubble in 2020 when the Lakers, of course, won it all. Now, regardless, Father Time, I don't know, it seems like it's been pretty kind to LeBron James, still arguably a top 10 player in the NBA. And we have the numbers to prove it when it comes to LeBron. You're taking a look at the most points per game in the 20th season or later. And LeBron is right there the 2022-23 season, 28.9 points per game. And he's in pretty elite company there. Uh, Kobe, Dirk, Kareem, Vince Carter. LeBron about to kick off his 21st season in the NBA. And we have Bill Ryder and Tim Doyle. What a pair to just talk about NBA opening night. And of course, that means, guys, we get to see LeBron. The accolades, the resume, we all know it. Four-time NBA champ, four-times final MVP, NBA all-time points leader, 19-time all-star. We could go on and on and on. We know that he wants to play with his sons potentially, but Bill, I'll start with you. What more can he add to his legacy at this point? Well, he can keep adding to that points record, which, which may never be beaten if this guy plays two or three more years. Playing with his sons will be part of that, but he'll tell you, and the people around him will tell you, that the only thing he has his, his heart set on, and the only goal that he's got in front of him, is to win an NBA championship. And while there's a, a mixed review out there around the league about whether the Lakers are legit contenders, some people think they are, or whether they're not, there are certainly doubters. LeBron James thinks that he is good enough and still young enough at heart, at least, and capable enough to get the Lakers to another title, another ring for himself. Yeah, it's absolutely what he's chasing. Six, let's be honest, right? It's how many Michael had, and that's going to be the comparison. Michael did go 6-0, six, six NBA Finals MVPs, and who knows if he would have went 8-0 oh if he didn't take that baseball sabbatical. But what LeBron James has proven, and I wrote this down because I wanted to get this right. Phil, you could argue this. He is the strongest, most athletic, well-conditioned athlete of all time. Phil, any rebuttal? I'm going to say strongest, no argument. Most conditioned, no argument. What was the other one? I didn't write it down. Most athletic. I mean, yeah, look, yes. Uh, no no argument here. And I'll just add to that as part of what as part of what you said. I'm not sure any player in the history of this sport or maybe any major American sport has taken care of their body as effectively, as religiously, and as obsessively as LeBron James. Yeah, and why that's important, Jack Lennon, is because tonight he's going to be going up against... Well, somebody who Lester doesn't take the best care of his body, right? And uh, the Joker right now is in the midst of an unbelievable run that is not slowing down anytime soon. But I challenge him, Jacqueline. I'm challenging the Joker. Get your you-know-what in shape, and you can play forever. I mean, we know the Joker loves his horses. Maybe he, like, <laughs> put as much time into, like, hitting the gym, working out. I mean, I'm just joking. The guy is a beast. Let's talk more about the Nuggets. Obviously, you guys mentioned LeBron wanting to get another championship, and it was the Nuggets who stood in their way, of course. Um, they raised the championship banner. They get their ring tonight, and the schedule makers knew what they were doing. The Lakers, who were swept in this journey for this achievement of the Nuggets, got to sit there and watch the whole thing, Tim. Yeah, I mean, how, how sweet is that if, if you're Denver? Does Joker even want to be there? You know, <laughs> interesting enough, I was out with a few Nuggets executives a couple of weeks ago, and I got some inside scoop on where they are at just inside the franchise. You know, this is a contract year for Jamal Murray, and apparently he is coming to camp in tip-top shape because he's looking at a super max deal. Use that however you want as far as player props. But I asked them, I said, how did the Joker look? They said he looked about 30%. And I was like, okay, now I was on my second martini transitioning over to Bill's uh, old fashions. But I remembered that. So the next day I go to the United Center, my beautiful eight-year-old son, Chicago Joe, and I watch the Joker at 30% in the first half against the Chicago Bulls. Have 18 points, eight rebounds, and six assists. And basically he looked at us and he went, are you not entertained? He's making a mockery of the game. He's that good right now. Larry Bird had an eight season run, Bill. Eight seasons, he finished second five times, won three straight MVPs. We're looking at the same thing with Joker.
Yeah, I can't speak to whether Joker is going to be around in five or 10 or 15 years taking care of his body, but you're right. Right now, he's the best player on the face of the earth. And the, and the point that, that people keep making to me when I talk to folks around the NBA and I say, give me the contenders in the Western Conference who, who aren't the Denver Nuggets, person after person just walks through the flaws of all the teams that are supposedly going to challenge Denver. Phoenix Suns, health questions, and whether these guys come together and already Bradley Beal going to miss his opener. The Lakers are, they're a little changed, but mostly the team they were last year got dominated by this Nuggets team in the Western Conference Finals. Memphis Grizzlies obviously lost Steven Adams for the season. John Morant's going to miss 25 games. It, there's no team, and, and somebody will step up. The Warriors are older. A lot of people think their window is closed. There's no team that is a sure thing to rise to the level you have to get to to beat Denver this year. Denver is the same team. They're more or less the same squad. They have the same core. They believe, I'm, I'm sure you heard, Tim, when you're talking to those executives, that Michael Porter Jr. is still an untapped superstar to the level they believe he can get to. So the Nuggets don't just end up this season with the best player in the NBA. They're the best player, the best team in the Western Conference, bar none. And I'm not sure the road is going to be as difficult out West as it is for some other teams out East. And in this matchup, the Nuggets, they are favored. Of course, you got the little revenge factor maybe for L.A. But, Tim, I'll start with you. Actually, I have two questions for you. Who do you think is going to win? And have you seen any, like, leaked photos of the ring? Like, what do you think their championship ring is going to look like? Good, bad? Like, what is your take on it? Great question. I've not seen any leak, leak photos of the ring. Um, I remember my buddy won a national championship playing at Maryland, and I used to act like him, but that was a much younger day. I was like, hey, look at my ring, everybody. Uh, but it was before social media. Um, as far as my pick in this game, uh, Denver should be favorite. I just think this is too many points. You know, Bill, the only thing that I'm worried about, and I, this is a legit worry with Denver, you lost Bruce Brown, and, and the guy that they told me is really – the best player other than the starters now is Christian Brown, not Braun Brown. And he was had a fantastic summer, and he's gotten exponentially better. Now, we didn't see him in the preseason. We saw Julian Strother. He looked pretty good. So they're going to need to kind of find their depth. Give Rob Palenka, the Rob Lowe lookalike, a lot of credit. This team was awful like six months ago. Go to a Western Conference final, revamp their roster, and Bill, I'll put up their depth on paper against anybody else in the NBA. Give me the Lakers here plus the points. Yeah, I love I love the Lakers team and how they've built this. If big if LeBron James can play enough games and if bigger if Anthony Davis can be healthy for this one. I just think it's worth pointing out LeBron's amazing 21st year. We've already talked about it. He's a very slow starter out of the gate. He has never won an opening night with the Los Angeles Lakers. He's 0-5. He's well below 500 in his career on opening night. And his teams often just don't begin particularly well, at least for, for what they go on to accomplish or nearly accomplish. So for me, I would just be a little hesitant with this Lakers team. And there's the fact, guys, you've seen this. The Nuggets have not been afraid to talk a lot of smack about that Lakers team and that sweep for whatever reason. It's personal when it comes to the Nuggets playing the Lakers. Put all that together, I think it's a pretty nice evening for Denver in this home opener. All right, guys, and in the 10 p.m. Eastern slate, we get the Suns and the Warriors. KD finally getting to play a game on the road against his former team in front of fans because the last one was during COVID. No fans allowed in the building. Um, Bill, do you think the fans are going to be kind to KD as he goes back to the Chase Center? Uh, look, that's a really that's a mixed bag for a lot of Warriors fans. I think so. I don't know that it's the best idea. I know he was asked to go out there and just say, I deserve to have my number that I played with in Golden State retire when I get there. He's going to get his love. He's going to get his flowers. I think I think the bigger good news for, for Kevin Durant, even though they're going to miss Bradley Beal, is the fact that there's no Draymond Green for the Warriors. In the last two years, Golden State is below 500 when Draymond doesn't play. And, and we know that Kevin Durant feels like he didn't get the credit that he deserved, maybe the, the shine and respect he deserved, even though he had two NBA Finals. So I think it's going to be a pretty impressive night for KD, and I would imagine those fans will treat him the way you treat somebody who helped you win a couple rings. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, they basically gave him two championships. He went to the best team in the NBA, and he was arguably a top three player in the NBA. I think it tarnishes his entire career. Who am I? I'm sitting in my, my mom's basement in the Chicagoland area, so who am I to say that? But Michael Jordan hated Jerry Krause, hated him. Never once went into his office, the GM of the Bulls, and asked for more help. He said, I'll do this by myself. Now, I know it's a really high bar of comparison, but I think Durant's talent level 
could be in the ballpark of a Michael. And, you know, when you kind of like wave the old white flag and you go play with Golden State, the way he's bounced back from his Achilles injury just talks about how he's dedicated to the game. And he's been basically almost better than after an injury that like five, ten years ago ended your career. He's an amazing offensive player. But Jacqueline, my biggest concern with the Suns is everyone's going to have to iron out their dance routine. And you know how I feel about dancing. I'm more of a face-to-face guy, right? In the sun, they're going to have to try to get their dancing right, especially on the offensive end. The last two segments I've done with Tim Doyle, he's like whipping out all kinds of choreography. Um, I think it's going to be three in a row the next time we do a segment as well. <laughs> Let's talk about the Warriors. We got Chris Paul. He's making his Warriors debut against his former team. Um, Bill, how do you think Golden State utilizes CP3? I mean, Tim knows this. I am not the president <laughs> of the Chris Paul fan club. So I, I would not describe myself as a as a believer in what Chris Paul is going to bring to the table. And we know that Draymond Green and Chris Paul did not like each other. And while Draymond says that he's going to make it work and he's found a newfound you know, friendship there, it didn't work with Jordan Poole last year when they got sideways. That said, there are certainly people smarter than I am who actually work for NBA teams who think that Chris Paul is going to be a fine addition, that he is desperate to win that ring that has eluded him, that he walks into a locker room that already has its own culture that works and that as a result all the things that have made Chris Paul not as good of a leader behind the scenes as maybe the praise he gets from those of us in the media which is how edgy he can be and how he can rub guys the wrong way the sense is that probably not going to apply as long as him and Draymond can get along he's not the player that he used to be he's older he's not the same player defensively but he still has sparks of greatness he can bring to the forefront and if he's a part of that closing lineup or not if he starts or not it doesn't matter I'm sure he's going to be a positive impact at least in the short term for Golden State yeah, it's just about establishing his role, right? This is a team where everyone pretty much understands what they do well and what they're supposed to do. Now you bring in Chris Paul at this point in his career, and he has to change clearly the role that he once had as one of the best point guards of this generation. So Bill expects him to do it. People expect him to do it. That's what he actually needs to do. Suns are fighting the same thing, right? Who's going to take the, the shot at the end of the game? I think it's Devin Booker, right? I'm sure a lot of people out there probably think it's Kevin Durant. Bradley Beal scored a lot of points in the NBA as well. These guys are going to iron out who's going to end up being the guy there. Reports early on is Beal's going to be a no-go as well. Draymond Green, as Bill mentioned, is not going to play in this game. But th these are two teams. I, I think the Warriors know themselves a little bit better than the Suns, but the Suns, their upside to get better is through the roof. So let's talk about this matchup. Of course, we talked about this new look Suns team reportedly again without Bradley Beal, and then they're facing the Warriors with Chris Paul, without Draymond there. Um, Tim, let's get your pick. Who do you think wins? Yeah, I, I'm going to be hammering Golden State here, okay? Uh, last year, Sacramento gave them all they could handle. And I thought they wore down Golden State because there was no breaks in between those games, and it was a tired Golden State team. Bill mentioned they were trying to, like, find their roster all year. Andrew Wiggins wasn't available. They were trying to iron out roles. I thought there was a bit of a championship hangover, which at these guys late in their career – sort of kind of makes sense, but now they're rejuvenated. And the fact, Bill, that they still have such a high basketball IQ, they pass the ball, they move away from the ball. If you know how to play, you're at a huge advantage. These are older guys. Hammer tonight, Billy boy. Golden State, lay the points. All right, I'm with, you know what? I need, I need some money, Tim, so I'll just ride with you. I'll, I'll add, Tim already, I think, made the most critical point. I don't think the Warriors have the same ceiling. about these teams in two or three or four months but but right now in this moment the Warriors know who they are and what they're about even without Draymond in this game even with Chris Paul trying to fit in we've seen super teams come together it doesn't always work I know Durant and Booker have played together before obviously but the expectations whenever Beal gets healthy the reports are he probably won't play tonight the lack of depth they added some in that three-way Damian Lillard trade I just think it's going to take a while for this Suns team this version to figure out who they are and how they play together and that's certainly an advantage for every team they play early on especially in including Golden State tonight. <laughs> Bill Ryder and Tim Doyle with the hammer, the money bag. That's how you know he means business. Getting us pumped for NBA opening night. Thank you so much, guys. We appreciate it. Good stuff, as always. And getting a look at the schedule of games for opening night, we get a rematch of the Western Conference Finals with the Lakers and the Nuggets. That is at 7.30 Eastern. And then at the 10 o'clock Eastern slate, the Suns and the Warriors. The Suns reportedly are going to be without Bradley Beal. The Warriors, no Draymond playing for them. Thank you.